Welcome to the KGI Podcast, where we feature students, faculty, staff, and alumni to get an insight into the innovation and collaboration around campus and beyond graduation. In today's episode, we are sharing part one of a series of interviews with KGI President Sheldon Schuster. President Schuster became the second president of KGI in 2003, succeeding founding president Henry Riggs. President Schuster was born in San Mateo, California, and earned a bachelor's degree in biochemistry from the University of California, Davis, followed by a PhD in biochemistry from the University of Arizona. After completing his doctorate, President Schuster joined the Institute for Enzyme Research at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, then became an assistant professor of chemistry and life sciences at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. President Schuster moved to the University of Florida in Gainesville, where he became a professor of biochemistry and molecular biology, interim assistant vice president for research and graduate education, and director of the biotechnology program, before relocating to Southern California to assume the presidency of KGI. Through his 15 years here, President Schuster has led the addition of many innovative programs, while KGI's alumni base expands its impact on the applied life sciences and the healthcare industries. In these conversations, President Schuster talks about the plans for a new venture that will change the future of medical training. President Schuster, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for doing this. Looking forward to chatting. So going back in time to 2003 when you first arrived at KGI, can you take a moment to share what the Institute was like at that time? When I joined in 2003, uh, it was really the very, very early days of KGI. And uh, <clears throat> Hank had uh, really just uh, articulated the vision very clearly, and it was it was so uh, I think obvious to everyone at the time that it was a spectacular and far-sighted vision uh, about how we would be the leaders in educating young people to grow in this industry that really had not even yet matured. So it was really looking well over the horizon, and the idea was so compelling. Uh, that even with a small institution, uh, I think at the time I came here we had less than 50 students, it was, it was obvious that it was so compelling uh, and there was such an opportunity that this was going to be a real star uh, in the future of uh, higher education, bridging uh, business and science and the life sciences. Uh, so when I came here, I, I think looking back, we had uh, 48, 50 students, some number like that. Uh, we had uh, one master's program. Uh, we were just thinking about starting. We had one PhD program, I think, that was under un, with Claremont Graduate University, uh, and we were really just sort of thinking about how we would build up programs, how we would work more closely with the industry, uh, and how we would really work together uh, to come up with a new approach for team-based, hands-on, real-world education in the life sciences. Uh, so it was a very small, very dynamic, and a very, very exciting place. The start of KGI started with a generous gift from the W.M. Keck Foundation. Can you describe their impact on starting KGI? I'd be glad to. It was, um, without it, there would be no KGI. I think that's probably the the simplest and most direct answer I can give you, Kelly. Uh, They had the vision, they shared the vision with with Hank there, they shared Hank's vision uh, with him uh, that this could be a real change. Uh, They obviously had faith in in Hank as a leader, uh, and they also knew that that having it as part of the Claremont Colleges was also going to give it some some, uh, special strength and some special backing. Uh, Starting a new institution is is a very, very risky business. And the farsighted leadership uh, uh, Robert Day and the the Keck Foundation really gave it uh, was to have confidence in the ability of a new institution with a new concept to begin. Uh, And part of that confidence, I think, came from the fact that we were within the Claremont Colleges and the newest member of a a well-regarded consortium of higher educational institutions in Southern California. Part of KGI's growth has been seen in the way it's helped to expand its industry connections. Those are some of the deepest that we have um, for our students. How do those connections enrich the student experience here at KGI? It's multidimensional. Uh, having the relationships with the companies uh, globally, uh, and obviously uh, with, a, with a, a more intense number or more intense relationships as they get a little bit closer, uh, has really provided our students and our faculty and our staff uh, with a, a many different ways of interacting with the industry and giving the students uh, industry-relevant experiences. Uh, so, for example, uh, having the companies come here, send their leadership, 
uh, talk to the students about what it's like to work in those companies, how, how they began, how they grew, how they sort of thought about uh, strategic opportunities and those kind of things. The other part of having these close relationships with the industry is, 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 is the mentoring that you can get uh, and the opportunities that students have to go work in those companies in their internships uh, and, their, and their other uh, you know, industry-based experiences. But clearly, the most important relationship that's built, I think, uh, with the industry is during the team masters project and this was something uh, that I think uh, Hank and the founders were, were very visionary with uh, they sort of borrowed the idea I think from Harvey Mudd College where they have the, the clinic experience and that's obviously uh, for Hank's uh, ex experience and background uh, but we were able to convert it into a master's level experience with the companies uh, giving our students this year-long uh, time to work in a company, work under the timelines, the deadlines, the confidentiality restraints, uh, and the sort of the demands of industry uh, in a real-world experience uh, that is that is very serious for both the company and the students. Uh, this, I think, has shaped more careers uh, than anything we've been able to do, uh, any, any specific things we've been able to do. And even about, I think, 25 to 30 percent of our graduates go to work in the company uh, that sponsored their team master's project. So they get not only the, the work and the, the uh, science and, and business experience, they get to meet the people and uh, meeting those people gives everyone the, the comfort level and the information they need uh, to go to work together and build a career. Great. And as you mentioned, KGI's expansion isn't just an enrollment. The facilities and the physical space has also grown tremendously. Can you talk a little bit about the different campus additions we've had? We've grown, uh, as, you, as you say, not just in enrollment, but in the breadth and the, the uh, sophistication of our campus, uh, always sort of trying to make it look and feel and be more of a, of, of a campus. Y you, you may know that uh, we obviously are in, in what, was, what was an industrial uh, area in the city, and it was at the time, uh, again, uh, attributing to the vision of the founders, uh, we, were, we were a little ways from uh, sort of the heart of the city, and it turns out the city has sort of grown towards us. Uh, we are now literally across the street from the most vibrant part of the, of the, uh, the Claremont Village and the Claremont community. Uh, really embedding us in the community. So over time, we have we have added uh, a, a lot of new laboratories and a lot of new uh, facilities within the, the facilities that we use. But we've also bought uh, several new buildings. Uh, we have an entire uh, building that we've been able to purchase right next to campus uh, that is used primarily for office space for for faculty and staff as well as for meetings and, and conferences. Uh, we have moved uh, what, what we look at as, as across the tracks into the village uh, where we're occupying some, uh, a very nice space uh, that's literally embedded in the village and sort of on top of uh, the, the sort of the amenities that are in the, in the community, including uh, pizza right down on the, on the first floor, <laughs> uh, which is available to everyone. Uh, and, and in addition, we have now the opportunity, uh, because we've bought some very strategically important space uh, on Indian Hill, which is the main street of Claremont, uh, where we really can be very visible uh, and and uh, have a, a combination of space that's that's uh, it, that's uh, commercial and and academic, uh, giving us sort of what I think is is the best of, of all possible worlds. Uh, as you know, we really do uh, I think cherish that blend between business and science, and and uh, having people see all of those components and the students experience it is a really important piece of who we are. So having that has been very important, and of course the the, the biggest thing that we are now doing is is building a uh, residence uh, facility. Uh, which will be available for occupancy uh, this summer for the, the incoming class this fall. Uh, it's a, a large four-story uh, complex of two buildings, uh, which will have uh, 419 beds uh, in, in various assortments of, of uh, single and double uh, occupancy. Uh, and it will enable us to have much more of a campus feel. Uh, it's going to have a big plaza, a uh, swimming pool, a gym, new classrooms, uh, really an exciting development uh, in our growth into a, a, a residential campus. This is going to not only give opportunity for our students to have a place to live, but it's also, I think, going to change the nature of how various projects and interactions can occur, uh, making the, the, the team-based, hands-on learning 
uh, more real and, and even more intense. So the campus growth has been pretty spectacular uh, along the line of our, of our uh, programmatic growth. Finally, one of the things that we talk about here at KGI is that we are passionate about student success. When you're traveling and talking to someone who doesn't know much about KGI, how do you describe our students and the qualities that help them succeed? That's one of the most fun things I get to do uh, is is travel and talk with our alumni and see the things that, that have driven them and have propelled them to what we're seeing as their pretty spectacular success. So when I, when I talk to, uh, to young people, uh, I, I, I really, it, it's very easy to talk about um, saying, you know, what is it that you'd like to do with your passion for science? How would you like to see it benefit people? Uh, how do you think you could be educated and trained and get experiences so that you can take that science and actually benefit society? How can you implement that science and, and make a difference in society, in healthcare, in agriculture, in food sciences, in all those areas where science is becoming ever more uh, applicable? And what we do is we always talk about the, the, the pathway that that is required to really get these science advances uh, that all of these undergraduates have seen in, in their academic institutions to become realities in, the, in, the, in, in benefiting people. And it's really, uh, it, it shouldn't be remarkable, but it, it still remains uh, sort of startling to me that most people have no idea how complex and detailed and expensive and highly regulated that whole process is. So what, what's, what's exciting when I get to talk to these young people who are looking out at their careers and really not knowing which way to go is to say, look, we, we in fact are going to help you build your story. We're going to help you think about the areas where you can make a difference, where things that you like to do can become not only your passion, but they're your occupation. And you can do, do good and do well and have an exciting and, and uh, uh, successful career and at the same time know that you're making a difference in people's lives. And having that as part, part of people's story, I think, is, is really quite compelling. Um, I know there's a lot, of, a lot of noise out there that young people don't, don't, uh, don't get involved in these kinds of things. And, and I have to say, I, I find it just the opposite. Uh, I think young people are very committed to trying to do good and trying to make a difference. And when they see that using the science in the kind of ways we can, we can help them put together, uh, I, I think they're seeing that as a very compelling option and, and a possible career choice. Thank you so much for that history and evolution of KGI. That gives us a good background to go on to part two of our series. And part two will focus on the School of Pharmacy.